fighting is far from over. Not for this exercise. Welcome to Back of the Rat, a gaming video cast about games long neglected and not respected, games that everyone's heard of or hated, or no one's heard of and loved. We play the games in between the essentials and the awana, but mostly, we play what we want on this podcast. Join our Discord where you can talk with us and others about Back of the Rat games, and make sure to like and comment on our videos and leave good reviews on the podcast feeds. Your feedback and engagement is the fuel that keeps us going. We hope everyone watching and listening is doing great, and we thank you for joining us today on another episode. Starting off, we will introduce this month's game with a scripted segment giving you all the details, and then we will go into our unscripted thoughts about the game shortly afterwards. I'm Sandy, and with me always is Ben Dezer. So without further ado, enjoy. set in a fallen world after the War of the Dragons. Uh, Society exists in a sort of connecting tunnel system underground. You play as Ryu, a ranger who's set on a mission with his friend Bosch, a higher ranking ranger, to collect and deliver a package to the ranger headquarters. On their way there, the two boys are greeted with the corpse of a dead dragon, which somehow spiritually connects with Ryu to his latent dragon DNA. A short while after, aboard a train and having secured the package, the boys are attacked by an anonymous rebel. Ryu, awakening from the aftermath of the attack, discovers the package that he was meant to deliver is none other than a young, fragile girl named Nina. So Breath of Fire fans already know what's going on here. Ryu's left for dead and alone with Nina, and they also run into the rebel who attacked Ryu, and she reveals herself to be named Lin. They decide to team up and rebel against the powers that be to get the mysterious Nina to the surface where she can survive because she's dying underground. The air there is polluted and all this. And Along the way, the trio will unearth the mysteries of this underground world and whether or not the sky does exist. So Breath of Fire 5 Dragon Quarter is the last console release for the series. Unlike previous titles, which were tried and true turn-based JRPGs with globe-trotting adventures, Dragon Quarter is set entirely underground. Subway tunnels, power plants, other industrial scenery, lots of brown. It's sort of used to invoke the claustrophobic atmosphere. Through your travels, you'll fight more sci-fi enemies than in previous titles, such as mechs, cyborgs, electrified ogres, I guess if that's sci-fi. Your party consists of the mysterious Nina. She acts as the party's mage. She can set traps and unleash devastating spells to control the battlefield. Lin is sort of like the rogue. She has a gun. She's, she's quick and she's able to handle foes from a distance. And Ryu acts as the sort of powerhouse sword and shield user. Each plays a vital role in the tactical combat of Dragon Quarter. Turns play out using AP, which dictates movement as well as what attacks you can do. One of Dragon Quarter's unique mechanics is the combo system. When you're attacking, you can chain together other attacks to deal bonus damage or even unleash secret combo arts for even more damage. It should be noted that you can also delay a turn to store up AP to unleash essentially a second turn against an enemy. Though the combat is easy to learn, it's a bit difficult to master. The true skill comes from understanding the trap system and setting each battle up for success. So when you're in the overworld or when you're just walking around, you can throw bait to distract enemies or to draw them in, which then they can be damaged with an assortment of bombs that you pick up. This acts as a sort of method of preemptively weakening and defeating foes. If there's like a group of bats, you could essentially throw one of the baits, have them all gathered up, then throw a bomb and whittle down their life to half or even just kill them all. And now to get to the good stuff, so this is what really makes Dragon Quarter unique. Infamously, Dragon Quarter introduces the D counter. This is a divisive mechanic because it gives players an all-powerful dragon form at the cost of increasing the decounter. Now this decounter is measured in percentages. Once this gauge reaches 100%, it's game over. When you're doing attacks in dragon form, it costs a certain percentage driving up that decounter. And when you're not in dragon form, your gauge still goes up, albeit at a more manageable level, but essentially it's still always 
increasing. So there's this pressure to act quickly all the time. To mitigate this, the Dragon Quarter introduces the SOL system. This is a menu to either restore from a previous save or to restart the entire game, uh, keeping only your banked items, zenny skills, and equipment. Think of it as a limited New Game Plus option at any time. This, alongside the Party XP, which is a bank of EXP that can be used at any time to quickly level your party, which is earned passively through combat, rewards repeated play with easier progression. So restarting is necessary, as each restart reveals new cutscenes, adding context to previous scenes as well as reworked dungeons. The game was lambasted for its sort of sharp pivot away from the core design of the franchise. Dragon Quarter wouldn't be as commercially successful or critically successful. Breath of Fire nowadays is a dormant series by Capcom and remembered fondly by older JRPG fans, but in 2002, there was much anticipation for this fifth title. Known for their breathtaking sprite work, many wondered if the series would have the same success it saw in previous generations, but on the PlayStation 2 hardware, a lot like the Final Fantasy series did. So with the next title being a mobile gacha game, that pretty much put the nail in the coffin for the franchise. Now, this attempt at reinventing a series with the well-respected legacy that resulted in a mashup of ideas and visuals that strayed too far from both the franchise and the genre it was in made this a perfect choice for Back of the Rack. Here are my early thoughts. The game is ass. This episode's gonna be five minutes because <laughs> this wow. shit was just... <laughs> no, I have a love-hate relationship with what with the 30 hours that I spent with this game. Um, but before we get into that, let's fucking talk about the the beginnings, our first exposure to Dragon's Quarter. This was your game that you picked, special to you. You're yeah, saying man. that it's a game that... If I rip my heart open, <laughs> poured it out, this is another game that would pop out. This, like, okay, so story, story time. Let's go all the way back. I started my collection, ninth grade, went down with my homie Jordan, went down to the game store. Boom, I'm buying a PlayStation 2, bro. I'm trying to play Ratchet and Clank. And... Instead of buying Ratchet and Clank, he picked up a copy of Persona 3 and was like, dude, this game is cool. You should play it. And I picked up a copy of Dragon Quarter and was like, this game looks cool. I'm a cop it. And went home. I played probably like 30 minutes of Dragon Quarter and was like, yeah, all right. And then I played Persona 3 and it. How old were you again? I was ninth grade, so I was like 15. Okay, okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and then I just got lost in Persona 3. But I always kept coming back to this game. Like, I always play it, like, the first 30 minutes and go, yeah, okay, this is cool. Yeah, okay. Like, the way the characters look, the art, like, I always stare at the art all the time. Like, like just casually, I just have it in my bank of just wallpapers that go through. Like, there's, like, a specific photo of, like, Ryu and Nina that I just really enjoy that I'll post up on the screen here but I, I think this game just aesthetically is just cool to me it's like the very first episode of Gura Lagan but like it <laughs> but stretched yeah. into a yeah. JRPG and I thought that was so cool and, and it's cool yeah. now that I've beaten it and we're playing it now and I finally mustered past the first 30 minutes it, it does live up to those expectations. There, there's an alternate universe me that played this first and was like, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned that because the meta of you having played the first 30 minutes several times is really <laughs> what the game is, it is like what the game ultimately. Is. <laughs> <laughs> so so you really, it was, it was some sort of training. I was prepping you for the uh, restarting and um, of the game. Uh, I remember seeing this game a lot when I would go to my local game store. Um, probably from middle school onto or into high school. I remember seeing it a lot. I did. I think the art was on the cover was really cool. It's interesting because the cover itself has the 3D art assets as opposed to like, you know, the 2D designs that would typically be on like. 
an Box anime cover. JRPG. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. And they look really good. I've always really liked them. I like the... Uh, um, I, I was always drawn to it. The only thing, though, is that when I would be looking at games, I would typically go on, like, forums, or I would, like, go on IGN, and I might, like, see a gameplay or something, like a clip. Yeah. And I remember just thinking the game, like, this is all, like... I was really into games that, like, took me to, to exotic locations. And you're like, you know, so anything that was... <laughs> yeah, every every clip I saw was, like, you're just in this brown-ass, like, laboratory, or, um, like, a cavern, or a laboratory, and I was like... Ah, uh, maybe some other time. I don't know. It's, especially because it was one of the more expensive games, too. I remember it always being, like, 35 dollars. So, like, if I wanted to pick it up, it'd be, like, all my money, typically. So, I never picked it up. So, it was just one of those games I knew about. And I never really heard anyone else talk about it until I was older. And it was always in a negative light. It was yes. always, like, in, like, a... Oh, this... The game that killed <laughs> Breath of Fire. And it's not even the game that killed it. That's the fucked up part, bro. The mobile game yeah. killed Breath of Fire. But, you know, this will get the blame <laughs> because it's, well, that it's was, different. It's the mainstream. Yeah, yeah. It was... Yeah, the mobile game was the nail in the coffin. But I think after Breath of Fire... Because I watched a retrospective on it. And I was like, th there was a good amount of time between the mobile game and that last mainline Breath of Fire. And then I was watching some of the the previous games in in like the series, you know, Breath yeah, of Fire four. They, three, they look all two, they're one. like the pinnacle of pixel sprite work. Like they are amazing yeah. pixel based games. Yeah. So I guess people saw this jump to three D for Breath of Fire, especially with the change of the battle mm -hmm. system, and they were like, mm, Yeah, just nah, give us yeah. more beautiful sprite work. <laughs> yeah, I think Dragon or Breath of Fire three and. four four look stunning the sprite work is still amazing on that. like if they just yeah. re-release those games as is i feel like people would yeah. still be like cool like it doesn't need the hd 2d treatment or anything like that just, just leave it what's what's is. actually crazy is breath of fire 4 has essentially the 3d environments with the with the sprites yeah it has that whole thing going for it it just needs to be in hd and then you're done exactly like it just high resonance maybe some boom. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, that's that's sort of where I heard from it. I didn't realize that this game was your was so personal to you. Um, yeah, more so as a, that. I've always had it in my collection, no matter what, no matter where. Like this game it's followed you. Yeah, this game and my Sonic Adventure Two copy are the like, the only two. Games. Everything else I've gotten new copies of, but these two games. I was like, <laughs> when I moved back with my parent, my mom, with my mom, I, this was the only two games I packed was this and my Wii U. And uh, what was the other game I just said? I forgot that fast. <laughs> Sonic Adventure. <laughs> yeah, Sonic Adventure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I just always, it was always intriguing to me, just the, the style and everything about it. And I just never really, I guess, had the patience to really like, put myself in the shoes to do it especially because you got to remember for like a long time i was a completionist i was uh i got a platinum this game i gotta get all the 100 percent level 99s i gotta knock out every icon i used to be one of them guys so researching this game and we'll get to that later with gameplay <laughs> the once again the osmosis what did i fucking say i said it to somebody i said it again i think i said this last episode the osmosis of confusion surrounding this game and how it works and how everything functions and especially like right. you said you look it up on forums and you're like what am i getting myself into like this is obviously right. some weird shit you know what i mean mm -hmm. but it's not really <laughs> i would <clears throat> i would say that it it's when it came out, I think it was weird. I think there was a sort of a misunderstanding of what the flow was, what you're supposed to do, what's supposed to feel like, your aim, you know, because it's essentially a roguelite wrapped in a JRPG skin. Um, and that's being reductive, but it's it's kind of like what it's it is. It's the easiest way to make it understandable to somebody that hadn't played it. You'd be like, 
Okay. Yeah. I restart a bunch and get stronger. Yep. What's different about us playing it now in 2024 is that we know we have there's better defined genre like, you know, conventions now that we we sort of know the stall the we sort of know like the bullet points of each genre. Like we can categorize them and all that. And so now like when you frame it that way and you play it with that intent, I think it makes it easier. It makes it easier to grasp. But imagine playing that shit when it came out in what, 2002? Three? What? what? It came out in 2002. Like, <laughs> yeah, so, PlayStation 2 game. So, like, niggas has probably played this yeah. and was like, bro, what the fuck? No. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, what RPGs this. at that point that I can, I mean, not that I'm like this RPG, like, uh, this RPG. Um, like I played every RPG, but like, what RPGs at that point, two thousand two, had you doing what this game has you doing? You know, yeah, like nothing, nothing like permanently made you lose anything for dying, other than I guess I'm trying to think, Crimson Tears, I guess. But that's not really a mm, JRPG though. That's a nah, beat up. Nah. But it's it's still yeah, roguelike ish. Or maybe I mm-hmm. I guess Dark Cloud. Dark Cloud you do But you that's only your weapons though. Like your weapons can break. But that's not really a rogue like mechanic, you know what I mean? Like you're not right. If you your weapon breaks and you die, it's not like the end of the world. You just start over, you know what I mean? Just go back in the dungeon right. and figure the figure it the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? I don't think there was any Yeah. This is the first of its time. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's, it's it's unique. It is. It is really unique, and I think it's to sort of pass judgment on it preemptively, like before we get to the thought chart. I think that there are some genres that don't go well together. That don't complement each other well. I would say. I agree. You know. There are some genres that don't really like, okay, when you think of playing an RPG and maybe specifically a JRPG, in some way you're kind of expecting a, a like progress. Yeah, you're you're expecting a sort of more linear like progress where you're getting rewarded for like leveling up your characters, you're getting skills, and what's pulling you along building. is the st- is the story like the story in JRPGs is really what a lot of people like are playing for in Western RPGs is a little bit different. It's a bit more open ended and it's a bit more. You are the protagonist. You make your own like story and there's more flexibility and freedom. But in JRPGs, if you notice, it's always like a linear um, like we decide who your protagonist, who the main character is, and you just follow their story and. You know, the right. story of everybody else. There isn't really any there's little branching flexible. paths or anything weird like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and you expect probably to grind a lot and you're expecting, I mean, you're never expecting to lose any of your progress. You're never expecting that you're going to rewatch the same cutscenes a couple of times, <laughs> you know? So there's a couple of things that I think <laughs> that work against Dragon Quarter in its unique design. Like, if Dragon Quarter was released today, they would probably eat it up. Like, Hades, Darkest Dungeon, there's so many different... Everybody has so? a roguelike that they have gravitated towards. Mine is always Nuclear Throne. I still play a daily run of Nuclear Throne every day. But, like, there's some people is Binding of Isaac, some people is Risk of Rain, some people it's Enter the Gungeon. Everybody has their one that they're mm. like, this is the one I obsessed over, and... I feel like this will be in in today's time. This would be one of those games that a lot of people would be like, "I'm obsessed with replaying this game and figuring it out and going and right. doing new runs and stuff like that." But yeah, it's weird, especially because this is the only Breath of Fire game I've ever played. But it, I'm excited to play the rest of the Breath of Fire games if <laughs> this is the worst one. <laughs> I would say that. Um, well, uh, for, first off, my roguelite that I go back to or really got me into like that whole genre was definitely um, Darkest Dungeon. I think that was my first taste of like. You're crazy. <laughs> and that You're game is brutal. Man. I can't do it, man. As soon as the first yeah, stress comes, I'm like, nah. <laughs> it's I'm in out. The, the, 
the the game is insane and i didn't finish it i put like maybe 25 hours in but like i liked what i played but it it, it is really hard and it's brutal um but it is a roguelike ultimately um with like the runs and you're like you can lose all your progress all right go go again nigga (laughs) try again (laughs) uh but yeah i forgot what i was gonna say after that so so let's move into presentation <laughs> so we can move on <laughs> what do you think i'm curious as to what do you think about the art style of dragon quarter and how it looks specifically because it looks different at least from uh the other breath of fire games it looks different in what way well because it's 3d that's it okay <laughs> so graphically okay so graphically you mean okay the art style is probably its strongest suit, the art design. Like, each character design for the main three is, like, really, really strong and really interesting. And it, and in Engine specifically, with their sort of, like, heavy um, manga lines that they sort of have, the sort of comic style look to it, um, it, it looks really good. I mean, it's something similar to, like, Musashi, you know? There's a play on, like, the proportions of their bodies. Like, they have big heads, like, little necks. You know, and the, you know, big arms, yeah, yeah. big hands, yeah, big, shit. big hands. You know, I love it. I love, I love the propor- the proportions. It's really playful. The design, I think, the design of Nina was a little lacking and a little uninspired to me, since since she's essentially the game's excuse for like an air filter on two legs. I feel like, I guess, I don't know. I feel like maybe she didn't need to be over designed. I think Nina in previous games looked a lot better. Her iterations in like four, three, two, and one looked a lot more interesting. She felt more full bodied and just overall more interesting. But I don't know. I think it works for what they have here. Uh, I think Captain Z- Zero. Captain Zero? Zeno, I think. Zeno. Something with a Z. Her does. Yeah, something with this. She, she was really cool. Bosch looked great. Um, you know, some of the, uh, 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 cause I, I watched the rest of the story play out on a, on a YouTube video since I didn't finish the game. So I saw some of the other characters that were introduced. I just don't know the names, uh, but it was solid. I mean, the character designs were solid. I think where the art design over, um, sort of suffers is from the environmental design, uh, because there's not much to the places that you're traversing. So the environmental art and all that is a bit lackluster. Yeah. What do you think? I kind of I kind of got to disagree with you on a little bit on the environmental design. But I mean, there's certain points. Like I started to go back and rewatch my footage playing the game and I uh-huh. I do agree with you. Like at a at a high level glance at the whole game, you do realize that like damn, I just ran through a lot of factories and and subway stations. And that was kind of most of my playthrough. But then you realize it is kind of varied. You do get the ice cavern. You get the watery level with the the Trinity base. You get... Once you move towards the end, you do get the castle. Spoilers, I guess. And they all have very varied <laughs> designs when you switch. And there's branching paths and stuff there. So it's cool to see the different branches and how they all look. But, yeah, you're right. It, it's just... It's, but, I mean, it fits the world. Like I think what makes this really cool as a game is that the world feels lived in. Like, I I understand all of the creatures. Like, you see certain creatures that uh, can attack you that are also being used as transportation or being used as a generator because it uses electricity. And you can see that in the world as you play. And you're like, okay, that's that's cool. But you also understand, too, it's like, okay, we're underground, so I'm not going to get those cool, the jungle level and the obligatory giant church or anything crazy like that. You're going to get right. what you're going to get. And there's a specific point, like very early on, that you'll see in the very first town. If you walk to the right a little bit, it pops open and there's a screen and it shows a like landscape view of the entire town. And I thought that was really, it was breathtaking. Every time I got to that town, I just had to, and <laughs> it's, 
it's great. You see that they actually painted the ceiling so it looks like a skybox. And you're like, wow, this is a whole... You can see how far the city stretches. So, I mean, they, they tried with <clears> what <throat> they boxed themselves into, no pun intended. Right. I would... um. Yeah, let me backtrack here with what I said. So I think the towns are all pretty imaginative. I do like, like, you know, junk town and all that. I like that. It's like the remnants of humanity and the scrappiness. There's a sort of Mad Max feel to it, a sort of like post-apocalyptic, you know, and that's cool. Yeah. And obviously there's limitations graphically with the PS2. But I, I do think that they did a good job with the towns that I did visit because I didn't really see all of the towns that you're talking about. Um, but I think any time that I was in a dungeon, which is ninety percent where you spend a, yeah, where you spend a lot of your time, it was very like flat, you know. Yeah, um, I and sometimes borderline, borderline. I felt like they were um, very labyrinthian, like they were confusing sometimes to navigate like it was hard to remember specific landmarks because a lot of it was a bit samey so i would i had a, multiple occasions where i was like lost you know or had to like run around i'm like fuck where wait is this the same place is this the and same it, left yeah. turn and they do formulate it to where it's like yeah you're going through a sewer system you are going through the in, the induction system you are going through a sewer so like you go through one train station and end up at another train station and it's like wait what the fuck hold on you i can understand because I've, I've done the same thing where i get confused playing and i'm like even <laughs> the many times i restarted i'm like i don't know what the fuck i'm doing where am i in this early yeah. day, early game dungeons even even with and i was thinking about with the level design of those dungeons like okay it's obviously known that you're going to be traversing these multiple times and even when i on my third time i still was like getting confused getting is. turned around and then like the way the map is layered too there's two maps right the map that is like overhead and it shows it's like a mini map like it shows you sort of what you would expect and then there's this other map that's like from the side view and it shows everything as yeah levels. how far up and down you are in the actual tunnel i guess that they're in right yeah which confused me for Longer than it needed to. And I was like, I don't, like, I don't know. You don't need to show <laughs> me that. Feel like, yeah, I'm like, you just turned me around completely. Yeah. Um, or there could have been a different way that they showed it uh, relative to your position. Because it was really disorienting sometimes. Um, also, pressing circle to to open up the map. Is that what it was? Yeah, I had to change the controls it was circle. in my system. Yeah, I went back. I changed the controls. I think I changed it to, like, start opening up the map or something like that and then circle okay. opens up yeah. the menu because i could not do it bro i was doing the same thing <laughs> i kept accidentally opening up the menu i was like what the fuck bro yeah yeah um yeah i know you mentioned that you really liked the cinematography the yes game. i really liked Tell the me. i like the way that all of the cutscenes were designed. And especially because they have this system in the game called the Soul System, which we'll get into later with gameplay, but specifically with cutscenes. And on replays, you get certain new scenes that'll pop up and give a little more clarity or context to certain situations. One of the first ones that you see is a scene of what happens after you leave the room. Um... So Bosch is talking to Zeno and he's like the camera pans up and you can see the way that the animations on the characters are and they're so vibrant, but it isn't expressive. It's in a weird way that you could. I don't know how to describe it, bro. Like, you... OK, so here it, here's what it is. It's JRPGs. I'm so used to a JRPG sitting me down about halfway through the game. To have a powwow to go here's everything that's happened here's what's going to happen here's why everybody's doing everything and here's what everybody feels so let's continue on you know what i mean this happens numerous right, right. times throughout a grpg to make sure that you understand the story dragon mm -hmm. quarter doesn't do that and there's certain scenes that it it makes you question the intent 
you know, and I like that for the JRPG. I'm not hearing the players' thoughts. I'm not hearing them talk about their feelings. There's certain scenes where Ryu, like Nino, uh, Lin walks up to Ryu and is like, hey, are you, and he cuts her off like, I know. Don't worry about it. And you don't know what the fuck this means. You're like, wait, what are they, what's going on? I like that. I like that. I don't know how the dragon form is affecting him. And there's another scene, I think, You've seen it where after you destroy all the stuff from fighting Zeno and like Bosch is like his eyes are wide and he's like, yo, what's up with this guy? Or even when Bosch yeah. um, betrays you, it's you don't see that in a JRPG. Usually JRPGs, they'll make the sprite walk up and then he'll just go huh, and punch him. Right. But like they're showing him actively stabbing him, actively betraying and going. I can see Bosch's descent into madness without them telling me that he's descending into madness i see it firsthand from the accounts of how he sees the events play out in the story and they show it specifically and i think that that's a really exp like i think that's that was the next step for breath of fire of uh, over beautiful sprite work and beautiful character designs and beautiful worlds and monsters let's let's show the emotions of the characters fully in this art style and i think the cinematography of cutscenes did that perfectly. Yeah, I, I will agree with you that it's definitely expressive and that they definitely... Um, there's a sort of stiffness because of the just animation restrictions that they might have had with the characters, but it's very, like... It's very expressive with the camera work and a lot of the animated, like, 2D facial expressions that they can add. Which is really cool. So it made a lot more, it made the cutscenes a lot more interesting because they could have almost done a sort of like, you know, visual novel style thing, or they could have done just like cut to this person's face, cut to that person's face, cut and then just back and forth for however long. Right. They could have kept the camera isometric and just had the text at the bottom, but they really gave the overall narrative presentation. I think like a a good facelift, and it was a very creative facelift surprisingly not voice acted yeah i think this was the case at the time but it looks like it would be and it's a little like jarring sometimes when it's not and it know. is especially jarring at the end because specifically there's only the only the only the ending is voiced and it's not dubbed so it's just weird as fuck that it's just out of nowhere. I just hear Japanese huh. talking. And I'm like, wait, that's how Ryu sounds? And I'm like, that makes right. sense why every time you shoot Lin's gun, she's like, ora, 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 ora. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because she's just saying that's right, they in do Japanese. Have... But I didn't know that. I just thought she was being weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it would have been fine if they just added the voice, the Japanese dub on it. Like, that would have been. Yeah, I wouldn't have cared. And then just like, yeah. But I guess it's too. It would have given more life. True. That is true. But even then, the ending cutscene is in Japanese, so it's kind of weird. It just throws you off. Because it even pops up in Japanese letters, and it's like, what the fuck? Like, didn't localize right. that? Okay. Yeah, wh what did you think about that opening cutscene? And the ending cutscene? I... <laughs> It's weird I never watched it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm going to say it's weird because it's because it's 3D animated. It's it's weird. So like mm. the rest of the game, there isn't like any other major scenes that's 3D animated other than that intro before you play start and the ending. So it's just like like when it happens, you're like, oh, shit. Oh, we're we're three D animated. But if they did that like throughout the game for like every major scene, like when Bosch betrayed you and your yeah. first time going into dragon form and stuff like that, if those were three D animated like that, I could see it being like, okay, this is an indicator of this is a very important scene. But it just it looked weird. It felt weird. If but it got the point across though, because that ending was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> It did look really weird. I will say it was very inconsistent with, like, the art style in the game. It's almost as if, like, you know, like, with, you know, those 16-bit era games and the 32-bit era and, and beyond. And that random FMV would come on. 
Yeah, the random FMV, or even like when you're in the world map, you're like a like a fucking chibi ish like version <laughs> of yourself. But then when you're in the actual battle, you're like a f- more fleshed out version yeah, of the yeah. character. That's what it would have felt like. So I don't know. Yeah. I feel like they could have just kept kept the the in game engine style because that looked a lot better than the weird like Spider Man. Do you remember <laughs> that one animated Spider Man, the MTV? <gasps> Bro, Spider-Man? the fuck it. <laughs> That's what. That's what it was. <laughs> the fucking MTV Spider. <laughs> no, yeah, the MTV. You're right. Like, and then they also did like an Iron Man that was kind of like that too. When he's yeah, that style. Game. Yeah, the weird ass three. I don't like that animation style. It was super because it was like really, really stiff. Yeah, Re- like yeah, and, and it, it tries like, to play like it's not stiff, and it's like, bro, I see you. I you're, see you. <laughs> you can't fool me. <laughs> Uh, yeah. What did you yeah, think of the uh, yeah, monster yeah. designs? Um, those hogs, those warthogs, reminded me of uh, the like the goblins in Zelda, <laughs> the Wind Waker goblins. Yeah, yeah, they reminded me so much of. Yeah, I was like, wait, what the fuck? Like for a minute, I was like, I had to look it up because I was like, hold on, how close are these designs? Because I'm like tripping. I swear these are like nah. I had the same thought. They were pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz they're like red and they they have a axe or they have like a fucking some sort of blunt weapon or whatever. But yeah, I don't um overall the designs not super impressed. Not super impressed from what I saw. I do think that some of the me- the mechanical enemies were kind of cool and kind of a surprise as I started to run into them. But I don't think there were any enemies where I was like, "Oh wow, this this thing looks cool. It all it was all standard fare to me, I would say. But I didn't face off against every every creature. So I could just be saying this about the beginning, like the first I don't know. How far did I get? I got thirty hours in and I got a little bit past the ice <laughs> cave into the like the industrial area. And then yeah, I you pretty it much there. you pretty much saw it. Halfway? Yeah, that's, oh, that- <laughs> that's halfway. And you pretty much saw like most of the monsters. It's, it's mostly like They didn't add more? There's like recolors and like certain bosses that are different. Oh, oh. But like, like the the council because they're gonna fight the council. So like all of the yeah, council yeah. have really cool move sets and That's right. arenas and stuff like that. But it's more so arena design later on than it is like monster design. There's like, no, I'm trying to think. There's like a bee. There's like a bee monster. But I never really. Yeah, I feel you. Like once you get to like around the ice cave, yeah, you kind of have already seen everything because that's when they start showing mimics and stuff like that. So you, you've seen it all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's really nothing. I did like the way the ants looked. The ants are so cool, man. I fuck with the ants, bro. I'm learning. I, I'm just a. I'm just a guy that likes weird uh, Tamagotchi modes attached to my <laughs> games. <laughs> oh yeah, with the yeah with the chows from yeah. Sonic Adventure. Those things, those ants um, are really cool. Yeah, I thought all the NPCs, all the NPCs look solid. The wasp girl that leads you to the ant farm, she's or like the bee girl, whatever she is. Yeah, she's, little, she was cute, cute little design. Um, I don't know. I guess that's kind of it as far as the designs that I can think of. But in the end of the monster designs really stuck out to me, at all. Yeah, Although it was funny to think. About the slimes, I was like, "There's slimes in every JRPG, isn't there?" And I wonder. Yes. I'm like, "Did Dragon Quest start that?" I'm like, "What? What is it with these slimes? The most boring enemy." I feel like if I almost feel like if one JRPG is gonna do it, cool, let that be their thing. And I feel like it. It's the that thing was with Dragon, Dragon Quest. Quest. Yeah. But then, like, to add it for I, I played uh, several other JRPGs with like a little ball with eyes and it's a slime, and I'm just like. Lazy <laughs> <laughs> goblins again. Ugh. Yeah, g- g- yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Nah, I feel you. It plus they look weird. They have like googly eyes and shit. Like, and then they do like the yeah. dumbest attack where they just inflate. <laughs> they like flatten you like a fucking cartoon. Yeah. It, it, they're so weird. I actually thought it was like a, I thought it was supposed to be like a rare monster that gave you extra. Like perks XP or, or something? XP or something. No. I don't know why I thought that. And there's, I'm like, no, there's something special about these fucking 
Yeah, yeah. Fuck them. Every time I saw them, I was like, skip. I'm not fighting them no more, bro. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, them and the fucking... If you're, if you're crossing, like, a bridge... There's always like the bee, the mosquito ones. Or oh, whatever. yeah. <laughs> nah. Gotta just run. Fuck those. Yeah, I'm just like, fuck that. I'm not about to fight 20 of you for nothing. Yeah. Like, no way. For 2 EXP, fuck this. <laughs> yeah, fuck, exactly. <laughs> that was my mentality for the whole game. Fuck this. <laughs> yeah. So, fun fact about this game, too, is last season, we had a toss-up between this game and Eternal Sonata. And it was chosen because oh. of the music where you were like, we're just going to pick two random songs from the OST and whatever mm-hmm. OST sounds more fi, we're going to play mm-hmm. an Eternal Sonata one because of cheat codes. So now that we've actually played the game, <laughs> what do you think of the OST? <laughs> I actually kind of liked it. I didn't. I, I kind of fucked with it. We got him. We got him. Kind of, yeah, I, it's it's the same guy from... Um, Hitoshi Sakamoto, who does the OST for Final Fantasy XII, which I love. Um, and yeah, this is one of his earlier projects that he did. And I don't know, I kind of like, I fucked with it. I didn't, I actually want to download the soundtrack just so I can listen to all the like pieces of music. Um, but I liked almost all the music except for maybe the battle theme, which I was like, all right, this is like kind of standard fare, but I liked it. Yeah. Because Sakimoto also did the music for, I believe, Final Fantasy Tactics and Vagrant Story? I have to look that up. But you can kind of hear, like, the the similarities in, like, the music, like, the music tonality and, like, the instruments he uses. It's very similar. I almost wished maybe somebody with a more, like, I don't know, like, house sort of... D and B sort of sound would have like yeah used the game it. does feel like it deserves like a more like it would electronic have that. soundtrack yeah yeah like it doesn't feel like it would have like a, a score in the same way that you would think of like uh, something so heroic like um, Final Fantasy twelve and Vagrant Story and all that yeah the music doesn't uh, thought, fit the it fits like if this was outside of a giant tunnel. Yeah, this music probably would fit for a grand breath of fire adventure. But to be fair, I don't know the music for uh, the rest of the Breath of Fire series. But it's probably standard JRPG. I don't want to say standard, but you know, it's supposed classical. to be really good. Um, especially three is supposed to have like a jazzy, ragtime sounding um, huh. soundtrack, and a lot of people complain that it wasn't like heroic or like grand adventure music it was yeah very... and it's, it's funny so, so, now that this one is heroic grand it's adventure a ma- <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah i mean the music was good I, I i would download the soundtrack i would go through it pick you know my favorite tracks you know maybe you, you guys might hear it on our secret channel thing that someday we're soon we can cut that out <laughs> <laughs> yeah did you like it yeah, I really like this. This is one of those uh, one of those ones that I would always play like randomly. You know what I mean? It's right. random songs, just like Persona Three, where it's just like I like this song. I want to play it. Like I believe the Junk Town song specifically. I would play that Junk all good. the time, just on like just for the fuck of it. I do wish that when you're in Junk Town or that first yeah, in that first like city area. One of the first shots when you have control of your character is like the camera above a spinning fan, which I don't want to say this is a shot like that is specific to Japanese cinema or like to anime, but you do see it a lot in in that medium. And uh, I thought it would be it would have been kind of cool if it was a, a fixed camera game, because some of those angles yes. are kind of cool. Exactly, because then when you walk out that room, you're, at first you think, oh, this is a fixed camera game. Like, oh, this is kind of cool. Because you walk through the hallway, yeah, yeah. that's fixed camera. You go through, yeah. and then by the time that you actually get to, like, the first, like, dungeon, then you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I was like, okay, I guess it's not. And then you you can move the camera, but there's nothing to see. <laughs> exactly. So it's like, you could have just left it fixed, bro. I would have been perfectly okay. Yeah. Just make it like a yeah. uh, parasite where I just I start fighting now in this fixed camera. Yeah, yeah. 
I do wish that the like when you were in battle, the camera was closer. Like I understand that needed to be further away so you could sort of see like where everybody like you know was at like as far as positioning. But I wish there was like a toggle to maybe like zoom in a little bit closer sometimes because it did feel so far back that I'm like you lose all the detail of anything. Yeah. Um, but I think that was a that's more of a preference on my on my end. I do think it was like just I don't know. I'm like, why are we going? Like, you're going so far back out that you can see like the the restrictions or the bounds of the map. You can see like the black area. Yeah, you can see where like, there's nothing everything. there. Yeah, yeah, and I'm just like, cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great. exactly. Looks great, guys. It's gonna just as soon as you finish a battle, it just pops back to the 3D camera, and it's just like, okay. Yeah. Go back to doing what you were doing, and it's like, oh, yeah. And it doesn't even throw you like where your character was when you finished battle, it throws you where you started. So sometimes you'll do a battle and you'll be all the way down the hallway, and then it'll yeah. spawn you back. And you're like, oh, oh, yeah, I was in a battle that was kind of awkward, kind of takes me out of yeah. it because it's like you're in the area, why not just keep me as a tangible object and just move me there now? But I don't know, maybe technical limitations or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, it's one of those things that maybe as yeah, technology progressed or so, or maybe something that we've taken for granted um, with games now where we kind of have that freedom. But back then, maybe that was still like, oh, wow, we're, st we're battling in the same area that I'm walking in. This is still amazing because it's 2002. Yeah. This is a 22-year-old you know? game. So, yeah, that probably yeah. was the case back then. And it wasn't an action RPG, so that's also a big factor. Right, yeah. Uh, what do you think of the UI? Because that's so, so sort of in, in presentation. It was serviceable. It's very yeah. I don't want to say generic, but it's it's what I expect from a Capcom JRPG. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and from the looks of it, it looks very similar to previous Birth of Fire games, but just jazzed up a little bit. It's a little cumbersome, and I'll go over it a little bit more in gameplay in terms of its functionality. But I mean, it. it Right. It looks all right. <laughs> I really liked uh, or anything. Elise came in and, you know, I was telling her about, you know, the game that we're playing and I was asking her about the designs and she's like, oh, they look awful. She's like, I don't I don't like the way they look at all. Like, it, you know, like they're 3D representations, but she's like, they look cool in like the little 2D side profile, like where their health and MP is or yeah. AP, I guess. And I'm like, they do look cool there. Yeah. But. I mean, obviously, I disagreed with her. I thought they looked great there and in 3D. But she was like, they look ugly and, and boring. <laughs> I was like, damn. For real? No, my nigga. Our son, our son. <laughs> uh, I don't know how I'm going to tell our son this. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I, I think the, the UI, the menus were, were, yeah, were serviceable. They were obviously really tan and brown, like the dirt that you're around. Um, but there was sort of a slickness to them. I felt like there was a artistic style that they went with that feels, it felt appropriate, but I, like, you know, I liked when you're in the equip, uh, you're in the equipment menu and obviously like it shows a full body shot of the character and, you know, you can go down the list of things that they have. Uh, but it, yeah, definitely was cumbersome. I mean, ultimately it, like it was fine. I want to say though that I did like the Dragon Quarter font, like on it the box cover. Font. It is a great. I'm just like font. that looks so cool. It looks yeah, like the red going into the yellow and like the. I'm just like yeah. this is a sexy ass font. <laughs> really cool, really cool looking. You can move yeah. into your favorite topic, story. Story, oh boy. <laughs> I shed it a tear. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm gonna keep it real. I'm I'm, I'm gonna tell my truth. I shed it a tear at the end. I'm not gonna lie. It, 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 it hit me a little bit. It hit me a little bit. It was pretty good. Because understanding that taking away all of the gameplay elements involved with the game, understanding that at the end you're playing as this character that's doomed from the time that Bosch betrays you. You are doomed. And I think by design, intrinsically through gameplay, mm -hmm. you're like kind of forced to use the dragon form. It's like, a, oh, shit, my back is against the wall. Let me dragon form and beat this boss 
and you go through this world, you're climbing up, you're slowly like, I'm going to get Nina to the surface so that she can live. And by the time that you get to the top, you do this really cool moment where you do like the dragon charge against the boss to charge your bar all the way up to like 100% and it breaks past 100%. It's like going into like 160, 180 and you're like, bro, oh my God. Because of the context of the gameplay, every time that bar's gotten the 99, you're like, oh shit, I got to restart. I got to get out of here. I got to restart the whole game. Mm -hmm. So... It's just really cool to see that and actually to see the surface at the end of it and it kind of be like a a somber yet good ending. Because at first I thought Ryu died. I was like, damn. That's the piece of yeah. it. Fuck. But, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but it, it's a great story. I I like that it doesn't, like I said earlier in presentation I, and with the cinematography, I like that it didn't explicitly tell me everything because there were still questions that I had to ask of, why there's isn't like there isn't any notes or anything or littered around the world to give exposition or backstories to anything so it's like why are we underground why do we need air filter system what happened with these mm. dragons who defeated that dragon why did you guys manufacture people what's going on with this world and how do we get to this point and it doesn't explain that and i think that that's okay it doesn't need to be explained it's just telling a story for these three specific characters and I think it tells a really good story. Wow. I ain't getting none of that shit out of it. <laughs> no, what so I I played the beginning of it. Probably the I probably got about from what I could tell I was like in the early beginning of like the second uh act, I would say. There's three acts. I probably got into like the beginning of the second one before I dipped. And um, what I thought was that there was a very quick and effective setup for the whole story. You know, it doesn't really get bogged down in its own lore or its or its details. And you get a lot of the details as you replay the game. I had seven, re seven or eight replays from the beginning or retries or whatever. And so, like, you know, little pieces of information get added that sort of make it satisfying to watch the story unfold um even though the story is a sort of paint by numbers anime story or um like uh not anime story but it's it's, it's not very a groundbreaking story yeah it's very yeah. tropey it follows a lot of tropes. yeah right right um but in that time i think you connect to a lot of the ca two characters pretty quickly at least they're characterized well enough um with you know, like lynn and bosh in the beginning i don't know that and if anybody can really connect with a silent nina she doesn't really say anything she's just like a little sister so you might connect with your you might connect with ryu because he's protective of her so i think that you know people who might naturally be protective um, can identify easily with Ryu. Because that's that's Ryu's whole motivation all of a sudden, which I think that's where the story starts to lose me, where he's so bound to Nina in a way that feels... Unnatural a little bit? Unnatural because, it, not that it couldn't happen, but because it wasn't set up. Like, it's not like he had a sister that he lost. Right. And now, like, this is like... Or, like... It's not like he, like, that was his childhood friend. And, like, she, like, there was just no reason why he'd be so committed. Unless there was a scene I missed. But No, no, from, no, you're, you're, you're correct. <laughs> he just is like, I'm helping this little girl. And, <laughs> yeah, and like, committed, I, though. Like, yeah. I will kill for you now. <laughs> yeah, I'm going against the entire world for you. I've See, my thing is, is that it feels weird because... I felt like because like you like I said, they're they don't specifically be like this is how characters are feeling and this is what this guy is thinking. I don't yeah. know why Ryu did all that. And I don't know if it's necessarily important per se, but you could infer that maybe because he was the lowest rank ratio D ratio or whatever, that he's like, This is finally a purpose bigger than me. I can 
do what I need to do or yeah you know what I mean yeah but, but it does isn't I don't know that's never I feel like that could have been yeah, stated you, you could infer that but he never exhibited any of that like, yeah even when him and Bosch were talking about like yo like I'm a higher rank than you and yeah, you yeah. Know, he was it, just it's like, not like he would <laughs> I don't care what yeah he didn't seem like he had any ambition <laughs> exactly <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know. I think Ryu's just whole motivation is a bit suspect under further scrutiny. But um, I like the idea, the whole Gurren Lagan aspect of trying to fucking get to the surface. I like the feeling of it being claustrophobic in the caverns. And it just like, get me the fuck out of here. Please, God, I cannot wait to see this ending. Yes. You know? It would have been cool if something like that was, this is me wishing the game essentially was not the game it is, but it'd be cool if, like, the climax of the game was, like, you actually getting to the outside world, you know, to, and then, like, the, whatever, the downfall or whatever the resolution after that, you know, some other conflict happens while you're up there or something, like. Right, or you like, liberating to, everybody else to come to the top, to come. yeah. Yeah, there could have been many ways you could have done it. I think, I don't know. It's just, it was just kind of tricky, I'm sure. Um, I'll, obviously, like, the shadowy organization and all the enemies that you have to fight, you know, that are, like, you know, the Elite Four, essentially. Yeah, um, it really doesn't make any <laughs> sense why they're, like, we have to stop you from going up there and even when the guy's like yeah i used to be like you i was also chosen by a dragon to open the gate or whatever and it's like yeah so <laughs> but he failed yeah but he failed and he's like i wish i was as strong as you i'm just like what, what are you that? talking about what is the context of this like what the fuck it felt like yeah. they had to wrap it up and they right. were like fuck it send another dragon so he can come in man, bro come on yeah yeah it was See, that's the thing about this game, where the story really needs to... JRPGs are really reliant on their story in some aspect, where it really needs to sort of, like, get you invested and want and get you to learn more about the characters. And this the is world. definitely more... Ch yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and the world. And I feel like with this game having you do multiple replays and unlocking more of the story, it never really felt satisfying what I was seeing. That made me want to, like, oh, I, okay, I, I can't wait to do a full restart so I can see, like, some new scene thoughts or, on something. Yeah, some new, yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't do that. I think that's where this game kind of falls flat. And I think that may be another reason as to why this game isn't as um, commercially successful as other Breath of Fire games. Because previous Breath of Fire games, from what I could tell, are great stories that have great characters and great writing and great internal monologues. Whereas this game doesn't have that. And I almost wanted to just flat out skip the story section for the podcast because I'm like, it, it's, it's low key inconsequential. Like, yeah. <laughs> I low key, yeah. even after replaying it so many times, you start skipping cutscenes. You're like, okay, I'm not about to watch this cutscene again. If it's not a new cutscene, I'm not watching it. Skip. And you're kind of just playing yeah. a game at that point. And, I, I, did you I notice? Did you notice though that when you when you did restart and watch the same cutscenes, it wouldn't tell you which ones you've already seen, because like yeah, so it, it would say you know, SOL. Stole. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like okay, but I've already seen this one. That's that's uh, I, like I saw that on my last playthrough, so I don't know if this one is the new one, new one of this. Or if they're going to add more to this scene, like yeah, exactly. Happen? So so I was always not skipping. And so I was forced to kind of wait. I'm like, I've already fucking seen this. Why didn't you? <laughs> yeah, that was me on like my fourth like re restart. I was like, wait a minute, these soul cutscenes are the exact fucking same. All right. Yeah. <laughs> if it's not a new, if it doesn't start up and I don't see something new in the first like 20 frames, I'm like, okay, <laughs> we're skipping this. Yeah. So yeah. I felt very frustrated by that, for sure. Yeah. I feel like the gameplay really hampers your enjoyment of this story because once i did finally do my final start to finish run of the game mm -hmm. 
even though I skipped the story, the story that I didn't see at that time, which is pretty much most of the main dungeon, I thought it was cool. I thought that it was really cool the way that they talked about the story on those scenes. But I also lost a lot of context of that because <laughs> I've been skipping the cutscenes for like <laughs> 20 hours. I forgot what half this shit is. I'm like, why do we go to the ice caverns again? Yeah. Who was this guy that I just beat? It would have been a really, I think it would have really like bolstered the game if they just fleshed out more character motivations and more, maybe a bit more world building. All the scenes that were added, I'm like, I don't understand. Like, is that really it? What the fuck is up with the ant colony? Why is there no (laughs) explanation for it? Like. I don't. There could have been more fun moments between your you and your traveling companions, like you and Lin's relationship, or Ryu's and Lin's relationships, um, and maybe even some more intimate moments with Ryu and um, and, and uh, Nina. Nina yeah. yeah. So that way, like when at the end, when he's fighting, you know, f- to get her to have fresh air up on the surface, it's more impactful. Like very simple stuff like that. That I'm like, I don't. I don't see why you didn't add that. Like, maybe that's not the point of the game. You know, there's... I don't know. I just... I don't or know. Or maybe because kind of, of the osmosis me. of the soul system, you got secondhand because it's a time loop or whatever the fuck. So I guess maybe you're just like, that's where the attachment comes from because it's like, I got to protect this person because I've already done this. Because you've been playing. I mean, dude, this, this is my eighth time, bro. Like... <laughs> It would have been also cool. I, I was thinking about just the whole, like the whole aspect of the soul system and how it ties into the story. It could have. Why didn't they ha- have that mechanic tie into the story in some way? Yeah, or even like, the why first time, so... like Ryu be like, "What the fuck, deja vu?" Right. Yeah, yeah. Like have it be like a time, like I don't know something. That's crazy. We just solved the plot that fast. We just make it a Groundhog Day situation, <laughs> and it makes I mean ten times more sense. Yeah, because then you're just doing something that almost takes you out of their story and and lowers your investment in the story when you have to watch the same shit for little um, reward, essentially. You know. Yeah, because it's not like the it's, characters are going to act different. It's like when the second time that happened, every time Bosch is going to stab this nigga in the in the in the knee, like, right. Right. No matter what. And it's like, if it was a time loop, it could have been cool to be like, try to talk Bosch out of it. Or like, he just immediately right. squares up with Bosch. Like, all right, come on now. Let's go. I know yeah. what's going on. Like, just little small changes to certain events. That like, even if they don't outwardly say it's a time loop, they'd be like, allude to it being a time loop. And that's why he just blindly cares about Nina or whatever the fuck. Like, something. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I, I feel- it would have been far more clever. Yeah, the story by far is the weakest part of the game. But did you get like a sort of environmental message throughout? Like a sort of like No. Nothing. I got I didn't get a single note. I didn't get a single thing to be like this sector handles the air filtration or this system handles food manufacturing or anything. I got none of that. I was just going through zones and was like, I don't know why there's zombies and Slenderman here, but sure, (laughs) I guess so. I guess, I guess, uh, do you think there was any like themes of environmental pollution? Because that seemed to be like the main thing because Nino is essentially, like I was saying, like an air filter. Yeah, I did get glimpses because there is like a certain town that's set up on a helicopter pad. Like Uh you're climbing, like it's like set up. This town is set up on the railings, and then you're climbing up a stair, like a like a New York ass stairway, and that's the town. And then it goes into like the top, and it's a helicarrier. And then instead of it tell like you get in a helicopter and flying up, instead you it's a teleporter, and then it teleports you to like this the last section before the top. And I'm like, that's cool. Yeah, and then it's and when it teleports you, it teleports you into a castle which has like this white, all like light instead of the black darkness that would cover. It was like a weird juxtaposition that I really liked in terms of like mm-hmm. the design, but it wasn't really explained per se in terms mm-hmm. of like environmental storytelling. Other than that, to be like this is different, 
This is a different plane, I guess. Yeah, I guess I feel like there was some sort of commentary on like environmentalism, like air pollution and all that, that you don't quite see. But I don't know why they're underground. I don't know how the air right, right. system is. I, I don't know how this world works other than, you know, the small tidbits yeah. I get from talking to NPCs, but I don't get any more than that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it's reinforced, if it's saying, like, oh, humans will always pollute, or, like, so we had to create this creature, like, Nina, that is some sort of model of some of something, that, and she is able to, like, clean the air, but she can only clean it for so long, because the air is always going to be polluted, or continues to be polluted, and... Yes, I don't know. I don't, like, there was something there. I didn't look into it, like, deeply because I didn't finish the story. I only watched um, the ending, you know, from a YouTube video. But I don't know. I just thought it was interesting because I didn't... I feel like not many games at that time... Well, I guess it, Final Fantasy VII has an environmental sort of message of, like, the Mako energy and, you know, corporatism and Yeah, but you're outside as well, that. too. Yeah, very true. But I think ultimately the whole thing, I think the story... For it to pay off does require a lot of patience, especially because in the beginning you're going to be restarting a lot and you're not going to be making a huge amount of progress. You're going to be like inching your way towards a story that you might like finally invest yourself in. And and that's a lot to ask of players and people in general. I mean, even with like TV series, like if you don't that first episode, the first three episodes aren't fucking hitting if they're not engaging you. Right, you know, you're gonna you're gonna lose people, and I feel like this engage like the setup is quick, but things don't develop in a way that I think you know get like a satisfying, I guess. But I think that's I feel like that's a common complaint from what I've like read online and from what I've seen on like YouTube and stuff. But I don't know, it is tricky. I feel like yeah. people should have more patience with this stuff, but at the same yeah. time, this game stretches your tests your patience. Yeah, my patience wasn't more so with the story, but more so with the next section that we'll probably get into now is with the gameplay. It's the reason why I played the first thirty minutes of this game every like multiple times. It's let's start off with it's the obtuse. Let's let's start off with the <laughs> combat system. The it's weird. It's really weird, and it does not the, feel good when you first start playing the game at all. You mean like the like when you're in combat and you're initiating attacks and all that? Yeah, how you have to walk up, yeah. and then sometimes if you walk up, it's like, oh, you use too much AP, and you got to walk back and like retract your and and then you yeah. swing, and it's like ha ha ha, like that's that doesn't feel good, like having to go through that and then you're not doing like as much damage as you think you would be doing for doing a combo you know what i mean yeah yeah that was okay so uh, thank god i thought it was just me and i'm like sandy's probably fucking really killing it no but, okay even it's, at the end okay. of the game i was like bro this shit sucks bro <laughs> <laughs> especially especially lynn bro because at the, yes. by a certain point, I was just pressing, hey, 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 for like all 90 of her AP or whatever the fuck she had. It was just shooting the same shot over and over and over and over. I'm like, oh, my God. Like until I got her level three moves, I was like, I can't do this, man. She's she's useless. I hate yeah. using her. She does like five fucking damage. This is just fucking torture of all these enemies. Yeah. I definitely used her more to like position to push enemies back or to make them stay you know where they're at so he was definitely like a more of a status effect you know kind of person but yeah then you have yeah the it felt so fucking it felt disgusting you are right though yeah like at first i kind of liked it i was like okay i'm kind of fucking with this right but then like but then the game doesn't treat progression right it wants to do its own thing and be like, nah, you're not gonna like get skills naturally by leveling up. You have to fight enemies to get skills. You have you to gotta find steal those. These you skills. gotta find yeah, these yeah. random skills and shit. And some of the skills you don't get to the final dungeon, bro. Like 
all of Nina's level three skills are in the final dungeon. Some skills are locked behind ant farms. You got to go and do like a lot of shit in the ant farm to find this particular skill. Like, fuck that, bro. Yeah. And they're slow. They're very slow, especially like Nina and like using all of her shit. Yeah, like you're right. It doesn't feel like it just doesn't feel right at all. Like there's something just totally off about it. The it should have been a maybe grid based. I don't know. Like it just doesn't feel or right. Just to go move, straight like to turn saying. base or something like that and do the combos. Yeah. yeah I don't see why you needed to move. Like yeah. it, it doesn't really add anything. Yeah, I guess because well, aside of the trap from Nina's system. whole thing. Yeah, the trap system. Yeah. Yeah, but even then, by the time I got her. By the time I got her level two moves, I never used a trap. Like I would just use the lightning or the uh, fire blast. I used fire blast a lot because it had like a cone, like a shotgun cone of effect. And most things were weak to fire. So I just used yeah. that unless they were weak to electricity or ice or whatever I needed at the time. But they're yeah. all so slow every time. It's just like a combo. Three seconds combo three seconds and did you have an issue where sometimes you would press the combo button to like pull up the combo menu and it wouldn't pop up so it would just awkwardly end the attack and then you would have to attack again yeah i figured that sometimes i wasn't pressing like i wasn't doing the right combo or i missed or i pre- like i pressed the wrong string of buttons so that right. didn't give me the next thing and yeah so i just assumed i was like oh whoops i pressed the i didn't time it right or something yeah, but yeah, so I did experience that, but I just kind of chalked it up to me doing something wrong. Yeah, nah, that shit was acting weird to me. I was like, I don't know what's going on. Then banking AP, like, did you ever bank yeah. AP and like skip a turn to double up your AP? Which you can only do once. I <laughs> there's this one battle I had. Oh, you I tried to bank for like, like three fronting. turns. <laughs> Yeah, and it was, and I was like, wait a second, what the fuck? I only have, <laughs> so I was like, great, I just fucking wasted all this time doing that. So, I I don't know, it's, <sighs> again, if they had chosen different game philosophy, or different RPG mechanics, or implemented them in a different manner, it could have been a pretty satisfying system, you know? Yeah. But I, think I like the, the I like choosing the moves. I like yeah. choosing the weapons and the locker system. I like having the limited inventory, so it kind of feels like gritty. Even the save yeah. tokens, I like I like everything that it did except for the speed of which you could battle. Especially because you th- think about it, you got to replay this game over and over and over and over, and you're redoing mm-hmm. stages and stuff that you have to do. And some maps you have to fight in order to progress or at certain times you get caught up and it's like this fight's going to take forever no matter how broken i am no matter if i have level three moves and the best weapons or whatever the fuck i i still going to take like 20 minutes to defeat this boss real quick so it's like the pacing of the game is just slow the whole um yeah the whole feel of it and the fact that you have to retread so you have to do it again. And that's really the like the problem with this game is that if the combat and progression was just airtight, like if it was just like satisfying and air like no issues, good feeling combat with airtight progression, you know, like meters building up and you're like, cool, cool, cool. OK, now I have to restart and do it again. But I'm going to have like a character that has these better moves. I'm going to sweep the floor. You know, like, but it, it just takes way too long and it's too slow to feel good, which, I mean, I'm so surprised. I mean, you usually finish games more than me, but, like, I was so surprised that you got, that you beat it as quickly as you did. And I, was, I just... I, I learned know. to I like, cheese. That. I learned to cheese. And I think this will help out a lot of people if you're playing this game or if you're thinking of playing this game. Here's my tip to you, everybody abuse the d drive it's what it's there for because right. uh, yeah. you know what i'm saying like you okay so for those that don't know with dragon quarter we keep mentioning it there's a specific system called the soul system and after a certain point there's a percentage bar so every time you move every time you attack every time that you use the dragon form that you have everything increases this bar 
at varying degrees. And once it reaches 100, you have to restart. And if you die or if that bar reaches 100, you have this system. So where every time you get EXP, you also get party EXP, which is like a bank of EXP that you can use. So when you restart, you restart the entire game, but you keep your banked EXP. You keep whatever items you have equipped it and whatever skills you learned and whatever money you have. And so the, the idea of the game is, oh, I got this far. Let's restart and then I'm going to buff up my character with this bank of party of EXP I have to just instantly boost them to level 10 or 15 or whatever. And I got this sword from this super in late dungeon. So I'm already super strong and I already have the skills so I can just attack six monsters at one time and shit like that. So it's the idea is you are getting you're pretty much playing new game plus every time, but it's forcing you to start new game plus. But right. the dragon form, but they don't. <laughs> my dumbass used dragon breath the first time, and that instantly put me to like fifty percent. And I was like, oh, "Right, I'm never using this form again." But what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to use the dragon form, then use D charge, charge up two or yeah. three times maybe, and then use the level three attack. It one shots everything in the game. I literally went through yeah. the entire final dungeon. And I one shot it every single boss with that form, including yeah. the final boss. That's crazy. Yeah. So I, I think I try to do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that that was the idea is to use the dragon form, decharge a couple times, hit the monster in like one hit, and then continue on. And it's like, oops, I got to 99. All right, restart. But at least I got this far. So I was able to buy these super strong monsters items and shit like that that can to help me out earlier but you, you don't feel that way because you're like i'm not gonna do the little d sprint because that's gonna use my bar i'm not gonna use the d dragon form i'm not gonna use these right. tools that they give me to help me progress faster because it's gonna right. make me lose faster the game really is centered around that d counter in a way that's not explained like, it is pretty integral to you progressing, you know, to for you to get to um, where you need to get. Like, there's that boss rush in the middle of the game that I dealt with where you're fighting a gang of thugs, a giant robot, and then Captain Zeno. And it's like, on your first two or three runs, there's just no way you would be able to accomplish that boss rush, you know? Like, you're not strong enough. And so the game, like, really, like, okay, it really makes you use that decounter, that, like, those overpowered states. But then, like, the thing about it is, when I was looking at a lot of forms of people that love this game and, like, wrote the guides for them, there was a lot of, like, people saying, like, oh, yeah, just use the decharge and just use, like, this other attack, you know, and the rest are useless. And I'm just like... Isn't that bad game design when you're making all the, like, there? He, he has, like, six attacks, but it's, like, only use this and this ever. You don't, the rest are just yeah. going to waste your, and I'm just, like, that feels that's not good. Yeah. It's like, yeah. why would you it's give like, me the dragon form the if option? I can only use one move? Exactly, yeah. If, if only one move is efficient, you know, and is going to help me, like, like the rest are actually just going to hurt me. Like, it feels kind of... Yeah, I don't know. Because at, just feels cause at like... first I was using the dragon form. When I did use the dragon form, I would use it and I wouldn't decharge. I would just use the square attack. And every yeah. time. So when you transform, that's one percent. Mind you, like walking and attacking, that's like zero point zero one percent each time. It's very minimal if it even moves the bar at all. But transforming into a dragon form is an instant one or two percent. And every time you attack, it's one percent. So I was using the square attack. And then by the time you actually like finish a, a guy that's like 20 percent right there if you just use the square yeah. attack whereas you could just decharge then attack one time and that's nine percent but the boss is dead though and it's like yeah why would i not use that over that i guess a lot of games have this like where it's like oh what just use this it's more f efficient but I don't know, like the game is so centered around this mechanic of being overpowered and pushing through at the cost of, you know, raising that counter that I don't know if it feels the game a bit forces stiff. you to use this system. 
It's different from right, like right. say Final Fantasy twelve where it's like, okay, I'm gonna make everybody a samurai or whatever so that they get the best skills and the best stats and the best items or whatever the fuck. Like, yeah, of course you can min max yeah. any JRPG. There's a certain point where bosses and monsters start having what's called absolute defense. And so in order to do actual HP damage to them, you have to do this much damage in the combo first. So it starts with like you have to do at least 250 damage and then you start damaging them. Wow. Yeah. So it's like the easiest I way get to that. Yeah. There's certain bosses that have like 500 absolute defense. 300 absolute defense and like you know you're doing like even in the finale i was doing like 60 damage 30 damage 40 damage it's like <laughs> and they have resistances and shit like that so it's like okay i'm just gonna decharge swipe him two times and he's dead let me just do that instead of doing like going through trying to break because i think the very first boss that you deal with that i tried to do that and he also has this one shot kill move I hated it because it made me re- that's where I remember I, t- I was talking to you and I was like, bro, I don't think I can do this. <laughs> that was the point. It was because I died to that. I lost like half my party EXP that I got up to that point. And I had no healing items, no money, no nothing. I was losing money because of the ant farm at the time. I was just like, bro, what the f- <laughs> like, what the fuck, bro? I can't do anything. Right. And yeah, yeah, you can really bottleneck yourself if you don't respect the soul system and i i don't like that i wish it was just a normal jrpg even if they gave me the op dragon form i wish it was just normal it is an interesting game in that it's um it is for sure the back of the rack title of breath of fire franchise for sure (laughs) of the the back of the rack barring the the rack franchise (laughs) yeah it's definitely like barring the you know the mobile game it's it's very um it's very it's a very divisive game. I was looking at forums and, and stuff like that and yeah, people don't like anything that they did story-wise, gameplay-wise, like they changed it <laughs> too much. Where yeah. it was like this didn't need to be Breath of Fire at all. You know, maybe people would have liked it more, maybe would maybe not. I have no no clue, but I don't know. It was it was just a very obtuse, very, very obtuse game. Um, and I think for me with games, I do like being able to level up my character. And I think that in this game, that's like out the window. It's like, don't even worry about leveling up because you're going to get yeah. party XP and you're just going to inflate the numbers and all that. And you're just going to focus on getting skills and items that are going to help you. I don't know. It just seemed, It just seemed like an exercise in unrewarding repetition to me. I think if you're going to do a roguelike system like this, you need to have consistent and tangible rewards on every run. Not every yes. two runs, not, especially for the game. Not, the, like, not just the first long. run where it's like, yeah, oh, you because every time you open that first chest and it's like, you got steel. It's like, yeah, oh, I, you yeah, could have gave me like mean, a fucking save token or some zinni or something like anything. Yeah. Other than what right, the fuck yeah, I already have. Because those chests have the same. Uh, items that you've already have. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I didn't even think it, about that. And that's yeah, that's a huge problem, yeah. Yeah, like if it gave like a tangible thing of like this is a I don't fucking know. Bam, ten thousand party XP. Or bam, here's a new skill that you don't already own or something like that. Right. The new a new costume. Something. Yes. Yeah, anything. <laughs> here's I the think- background music. The reliance, the the odd reliance too on um, using items outside of battle, like the bombs and the like, you know, yeah. the dynamite and the food. I'm like, I don't. This doesn't really feel necessary, or I just, I mean, it's good. Like if you want to avoid enemies, but then why not just use your D counter or your D rush for like and just run past seven right. seconds? Yeah, like it just. Yeah, I'm like what is this system? Yeah, know. especially because, like, my thing is, is that, like, a lot of the enemies weren't fun to fight. They right. had a lot of health. 
And there was a lot of them most of the time. And there's some very annoying ones, like the ones that are like you have to guess the right element to like the little three headed dragon bitches. And you mm-hmm. had to guess the right element or else you heal it and power it up. And they would like <laughs> yes. one shot you. I did that so much. There was like one heal point them. where there's like a there's a blue chest in a room. And then when you grab the blue chest, you don't realize there's a giant robot behind you. And it's like, what the fuck? Like, it's just they do a lot of shit to fuck with you. And I don't want to say it's very from Sophian, but like it's meant to fuck you over. And I don't like that because once again, this game is actively you're watching a timer go. You have this much time. And if you fuck up a backtrack or if you're in a fight for an extended period of time, that can cost you two or three percent. And that two or three yeah. percent can come back to bite you in the ass at the end when you're like, fuck, if it's only stacks, I had yeah. three more. That's literally what happened to me at the end. I I fucked up. I li- realized I was like, damn, this last boss fight, I fucked up. I should have decharged one more time and I could have beat him in one shot. But now I have to decharge again. And that's going to be another nine percent. I don't have nine percent. Now I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> And just to be clear on, I just want to to be uh, more explorative of the whole like, you know, the the items outside of battle thing that I was talking about. So when you're not in battle, you have a couple of items that you can use. Um, you can use like this big piece of steak and it's, it essentially lures any enemies that are around you to it. And they'll like, you know, be munching on it for a little bit and you can kind of run by them or walk by them whatever um and then while they're doing that you also have the option to throw like dynamite or grenades or place traps on the floor for them and lure them into the sleepy mushroom or something but it's so clunky and not fun to use you can only throw three yeah you can only yeah it just doesn't feel right so it's not even like a good alternative it just like, hey, if you really don't want to fight this thing, but you have to, like, just hold square and just throw some of these grenade, these fucking bombs at it. To take away and then maybe, 3% of yeah. health. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, chips away, like, maybe half if you're lucky. So it just yeah. take, it ends up taking up all this space in your inventory. You feel like you need it. I felt like, I was like, well, I don't want to not have it, and then I'm going to need it for something specific. Or if I need you know, to avoid so let me, this, let me at least have, like, three fresh meat on me or something to throw. Yeah, like, I don't know. And maybe it's different, like, oh, you can capture the monster, and it'll, like, work for you, or, like, roam around the dungeon, and, like, I don't know, like, reduce the amount of monsters or something. I don't know. There could have been, there could have been a system, I think, where every time you fight, let's say, the goblins or those ogres... Every time you fight the ogre, there's a meter that builds up. You know, you, you've beat 10 ogres. Now you get this reward. You've beat 20 ogres. Now you get this reward. You could have had even like a micro progression system like that. Or maybe that's more meta progression. So that every time you're fighting the same enemy, you know that there's a, a reward after fighting them. As opposed to there being... Or even if you get incrementally them- stronger against that monster passively yeah, like where it's could, like now you do plus five percent damage or something like that ex- yeah that would have been enough to like make it worthwhile when you're restarting and fighting the same enemies that drop the same things and give the all same the time like, exp it's like bro i I'm already like, boosted myself to level 30 <laughs> yeah it's like i don't uh i don't know it's just it was frustrating and this game really kind of made me upset with all the things working against like you know, you just overall. Yeah. It's like, I'm just like, this is so frustrating. I don't know what Sandy is doing. <laughs> Bro, like, and that's the fucked up part is because I was exactly <laughs> like you until that fucking, until I understood the, the D drive bro like once that boss beat my ass and I was like, bro, I got to go through this whole game. I spent the whole day grinding going like that's when i realized like half this shit doesn't fucking matter the skills don't matter the yeah. items don't matter the fucking <laughs> it's level all about doesn't the matter D- it's all yeah. about the fucking d drive bro like any boss that give me trouble d drive it fuck you out of my face like skip all these cutscenes. Right. why am i doing this right. ant farm because so i can get the best ryu weapon yeah why did you Speaking of, let me <laughs> speaking going towards the ant form. What did you think of the ant form? How how far did you get into your little colony? 
Well, I had to look. I had to look up a guide for the ant farm because a lot of the systems in the game aren't explained well. I will add. So if you are playing this or plan on playing it or currently playing it, get a guide with a good overview of both the ant farm and just the overall mechanics of the game. Join our Discord where we um, have multiple links to sources that you can do. Before yes, you that play. I used. I was like, I need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I, I liked the ant farm, like the idea. I didn't get to mess with it too much. I didn't see a lot of returns on investment yet. Um, I opened up a market and a lab, and I didn't see anything from those yet either. So I never really got to, I mean, I thought it was cool, like, you know, jumping in there and picking your ant and having him, like, go, like, yeah, you know, yeah. they're digging and all that. Yeah, and, and that was cool. I thought I wanted to see how that was going to flush out. Um, I didn't know if I was supposed to have multiple labs and multiple markets because I had so many empty rooms. Um and I was getting a lot of ants, but I thought it was a cool idea, a cool passive idea. I think it should have been implemented a bit better. Um, from what I understand, this ant thing is co- is a staple of the series. Um, huh. It's yeah, it's a staple of. It's done a little bit different here, but it um, it's like you know, a through line. Ants are going to help you. Out. Okay, huh? Interesting. That's yeah, funny. I don't. I, I, there's yeah. a there's a. There's a whole super dungeon at the bottom of the ant farm. Right, yeah. <laughs> and uh, There's like a whole mega boss or like a hardest boss or some shit, right? Yeah, there's like a whole like real dungeon at the bottom of there. I, it's funny because I, I learned the secret. So you got to use the bank and then do a bunch of deposits and withdrawals and boosting interest rates and stuff like that and eventually you just get a lot of fucking money out of nowhere and then there's like the couple of there's a shop there's a skill shop and then there's a specific character shop for each character so you can get most of the best items in the game for each of those characters as well as some special skills you can get some skills earlier for certain characters and it was just kind of nice when I was, especially when I was grinding, I grinded for party EXP because I was like, you know what? This is my final hurrah. I'm going to give it one last restart. So I'm just going to, I was at the Trinity base and I restored. I would go around because there's like a little side quest that you can do with Lynn where you go back and find some medicine for her. So I would go there, yeah. kill all the monsters there, uh, come back, restore after storing everything. And I would just do that nonstop and then just use the fairy drop that I had there and i would just because there's a fairy there and i would just use the fairy go there do the ant shit do the withdrawals do the fucking savings accounts and stock markets and shit and sending ants out on dungeons to get items so i can sell those items and building my shit up just so i could buy the best items for all of them and then once i got that and i went to the game i was like wow that was a waste of fucking time. Because <laughs> you get the best, you get this sword. It's like, this sword is amazing. It's got this super skill that can like one shot some enemies. It has like a 20% chance to one shot any enemy. It's like, bro, that's cool. It does like this cool animation. You're like, that's cool. Yeah, but it yeah. still does 30 damage. That's how I felt with uh, Captain Zeno's or whatever. Yeah. The, the blade that you get. I'm like, why doesn't this scale you know like after i restarted it and went back and beat her again for the second time i was like i this thing is useless okay that's great you know but yeah yeah so i didn't really get to go on (laughs) i was gonna say did you find any of the hidden combos speaking of xeno's blade the hidden combos Mm, which one no i don't think So... so If you input the attacks, the skills in certain orders, they would do yeah. a special hidden attack. So, like, for example, if you do, like... Um, oh, right, 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 right. Those. Okay, so those are yeah. hidden combos? Okay. okay. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Cool, cool, yeah. I, right. Uh, I knew... I found them because the guides, you know, were <laughs> like, oh, hey, Ryu has this. Use this and this and this. I'm like, okay, cool. But I didn't... I never found a new one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did you find any new ones? The only one I found was one for Bosch, where it's like, I think you do like the poison stab and then like the top stab and it becomes like lion smash. And then there's another one 
Was, Wait, do you um, get Bosch later on? Again? No, nah, no, nah, you don't. It's just You're like just the beginning. About, okay. And then okay. there's one where you do like I think the side swipe into the vertical slash, and mm-hmm. then it becomes like the vert slash that does two slices. I'm like, that's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, and that's that's when more. I was fucking with it. Yeah, I didn't find any either, and that's when I was kind of fucking with it because I was like, oh, cool. Is this gonna on like before I did like my a first full playthrough, I was like, okay, this might be like expanded upon and it might be like really cool, but uh, it wasn't. <laughs> and you never found any more combos. There was no, I'm like finding shit, and then like obviously some weapons lock certain slots for uh, light, medium, and heavy attacks. So, I never got a weapon that had all of them unlocked. So, there was things that I didn't have access to. And I was like, yeah. I don't feel like experimenting right now and, like, changing things around. Like, And I'm then I learned that you have to place them in the right order because a, right. you can right. combo into a circle and an X, but you can't combo from an X to a circle and exactly. so on and so forth. Like, you can combo down, but you can't combo up. Combo and, up, right. Yeah, yeah. It, gets, it gets so granular. It's so weird. I don't know. Yeah. I thought. What did you think of the dungeon designs or or layouts? I guess more so, and like how they're structured and the enemies placed inside of those. Did you feel like they were good dungeons in terms of? Because I mean, that's most of this game is dungeon crawling. So I really don't have like a good uh, baseline for judging a dungeon. You know, I think I the think. only time I ever think of a dungeon where i'm like that was a good dungeon was like doing stuff in like the division 2 or like diablo 4 where i'm like this is a clear dungeon and it's like there's a end and a beginning and i you know what i mean um but the design of these like i was saying was so like uh labyrinthian and it was a lot of like just straight or like it was like a lot of crosses like you can go straight left or right you know, Oops, you went the um, wrong way. This is a wrong. This is a dead end. Exactly. Maybe it has some yeah. boxes or something. Oh my god! That actually reminds me. There was actually one cool little thing in. I think it was like the second dungeon where there's like a dead creature on the floor, and like you go and like interact with it, and all those little black like leech things come out of it. Oh yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. And I was like, that's kind of cool. But then you had to fight all of them, which was annoying. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, other than, yeah, I think I was not impressed by any of the dungeons. And you're right, it does really, they do kind of remind me a lot of uh, the game that we haven't fully played um, or we backed out on. Um, fuck, what was it called? Crimson Tears. Yeah, Crimson Tears. Yeah, it, does, see, it does. It, it did kind of remind me of that. But see, Crimson Tears got away with it because you specifically log on to those dungeons. You go, I want to go do the water dungeon. And you right. go and you yeah. do a beat em up in a water dungeon. Yeah. But you could leave. <laughs> yeah. 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 That was, that's an important part. Yeah. You could leave whenever you wanted you to. Leave. If you had the item, you could leave. <laughs> yeah. Dragon Quarter, you are stuck. If you are in this dungeon, you figure it out, my boy. Now that I think about it, the combat system even is a little bit similar with like the building your combos. Egg, egg, egg. Now you see what I'm saying? We got to go back. Next season, we got to go back, man. Yeah, we can add it to next season. I'm down for it, man. Yeah. And Persona. I don't know what. <laughs> what? I'm messing. We're not doing fucking Persona. <laughs> Fuck no. The, fir- the first Persona or Persona 2? Neither. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> Which one did we do? I think we did the first one. I think we both. Yeah, we both were like, I don't know, bro. <laughs> That's right. I think we did the first one. We both were yeah. like, yeah, mm, let's play Okage. Mm. Mm, nah, let's not. Yeah, play and then Okage. still no. <laughs> oh my god, Okage. Mm, let's was play Crimson so Tears. Mm. Nah. <laughs> That's on me. Though. Okage was was so. I don't know about that one. I, like sometimes I watch those you know JRPG videos or PS2 JRPG. You would videos. love Okage. Honestly, it's we a, played Okage. It's a really charm. No, we started playing Okage. I remember, I, you, we had like the the technical issues with it. Like it was like uh like I think you were, weren't you playing on like PS3 like through the backwards compatibility and it was like fucking up or something like that. 
Nah, I don't think so. I was... Nah. Was I? Or, did, or were you just like, fuck this? Or was it one of those... No, I would... Where... I'm pretty... Yeah, I was just like, fuck... I, I remember being like, I don't fuck with this. Or okay. something, right? Okay. Maybe. Like, I, I can't remember. Do I even have it? Or did I have, like, the PS3, like... Did I just buy it? Like or was it like the PS3? Because PS... I know on PS5 that shit was fucked. Like on the little backwards Com- PlayStation yeah. Plus classics or whatever. I know that shit is like glitchy as fuck. I don't know. Uh, yeah, we, we should write down why we quit some of these games. I wrote it down. So we, I wrote it down we'll somewhere so I know like why we quit them all. It's somewhere on here. I was going to make a video it's, of all, all the abandoned games that we've played. But it's only like four, so it's, it's not that yeah, bad. It's, it's, it's probably in the master system or the master list somewhere. Here we go, right here. Boom. Stolen. Runs like shit. <laughs> I never okay. tried Stolen. You you preemptively started that one. So I yeah, and I was like, yeah. Okage, it was boring. Quirky dialogue, fun story, future ported versions, broken rudimentary battle system yeah the combat was super we were like this is so mind-numbing yeah. we just couldn't yeah i think the combat was it we were just the like combat was it. i ain't feeling this man <laughs> hey you wanna <laughs> you wanna do <laughs> you was, wanna let's out? play musashi <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was yeah that's crazy that all four of these games was before we played musashi we <laughs> went through four games before we were like fuck this i'm about to let's just play musashi <laughs> yeah yeah, I think was it or was that? Yeah, it was, was all four season? of them was like right in between that season, and we were like, "Yeah, let's play Stolen." Nah, okay, let's play Persona. Nah, okay, Psych. let's play Okage. Nah, and then we were about to finish playing. We were about to record Crimson Tears, but then it was just yeah, all my shit yeah, broke. So I was like, I, like we just took a hiatus. And I was just going through health shit. That is right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because that's I around was, the time my PS3 broke or my PS2 broke. And so, yeah. Yeah. And then we but were like, well, I mean, fuck I was having it. fun with it from Girl, what I remember. Cool. When I replay it, it's going to hit so much more. Now that I know. Yeah. <laughs> not- <laughs> That's the main thing is like knowing before. Right. That's for sure. Yeah, uh, do you have anything else you want to say about the gameplay? Um, Not necessarily because I make it sound very negative. Let me let me preface this. Look, like, guys. I've I've, the inner mantra that I'm going to coin from now on is that every game is a good game if you don't got a bitch in your ear saying it sucks. And this is one of those games. This sucks. This game, low key. (laughs) I saw your review of on of it on backlog. You fucking love it. It's ass. (laughs) You love it. (laughs) Like, but see, I I love shit, and so you know, like it's. You have to put yourself in a headspace that I don't think a lot of people are prepared for when you're going into a JRPG. And I think especially learning the D counter system is that's the biggest hurdle. If you can get over that hurdle, this is a very good JRPG. If you can get over the slow combat, if you can get over the same environment designs, if you can get over... (laughs) Poor progression, poor progression, and repeated playthroughs. If you can get over slow pacing, yeah. And it's funny because Look, once you I, actually run through the game, it's actually a pretty fast game. It's like a it's like a four hour game. I can't recommend this game to anybody. That's tough. I couldn't recommend it to you. <laughs> That's tough. Being being one of my best friends, I couldn't be like, "Sonny, you would like this game." I'm so, I just can't. In all good consciousness, I just. Or not consciousness and all good conscious. I just couldn't do that. Like it just, the game has so much working against it, and it's, it's like it's, it hits a very specific niche of person, like an like a very niche audience that would enjoy everything that this game offers. You know. Yeah, like you can't like just you, recommend this to somebody that's like, yeah, bro, I like Tales of Vesperia. Or like, like I like JRPGs in general, even because yeah, I just like, think that it's this is for the freaks that play like Grolancer and Arts and yeah, Electro yeah, and maybe. shit like that. Like the people that play the weird JRPGs. Like this is for it's them. Like, it, 
it's a test of patience. It's a game that, like, if you have the time to really learn it in and out, um, and then see if you can enjoy it after that. Because I think there's two phases. There's understanding the game. Yes. And then there's, okay, I understand it, but now do you like it? Yes. <laughs> Are you enjoying it? Now that you understand it, it's like, still no. Because that was me. Where I was like, okay, I don't really understand it, but I'm willing to give it a chance. You know, like reading guides and all this. And then when I found out that what it wants me to do and how I'm supposed to play it and the amount of time and all this, I'm like, nah. Nah. You know? <laughs> nah, I, was, nah I don't think so. Um, and I don't know. This I feel like this season, I've told Sandy this, that it it is our, or it is my, I'm not I'm... finishing that season. <laughs> <laughs> like, I ran into so, I mean, it's only been... Well, technically, this guy, I mean, the, the city, I can't even, like, blame you for being, like, all right, I, I've seen enough. Cause, like, right, yeah, yeah, because it's yeah, fighting, it's game, fighting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But I didn't finish Death by Degrees. I got close. I was at the very end battle, but I didn't. And it's not that I didn't want that. to. I just, we just ran out of time, obviously, because we were already, like, running that. late with the podcast. Because not even, I didn't even beat the final boss or Death by Degrees. I like <laughs> I like oh I like tried it like three or four times, got really close to beating her, and I died. And I said, "Fuck this! I'm just gonna watch it on YouTube." <laughs> so I, exactly. I I technically beat it. I beat um, it in spirit. What was after that? After um, oh, we beat Dark Sector. Yes, we beat Dark Sector. Um, we beat Dragon's Dogma. Yes, Is that was that was that. Yeah, that was next. We, the city of you, we technically beat. I mean, if you want to, yeah, say that we play, we beat it once with one character or whatever. Beat it with every character. Yeah, and in this game I didn't beat. You have uh, to Alpha beat the Protocol. Next game. Alpha Protocol. I'm imagining that I will beat it. I'm you imagining. have to beat it. <laughs> I don't. I don't see why I wouldn't. Is there anything I, that you think that would? Listen, bro. <laughs> <laughs> We already put it in a fucking intro, okay? We have to beat it, bro. Right, right. I will. I'm planning on beat. Look, I don't go to any. I don't go into any of these games thinking that I'm not going to beat it. It's more of just like. It's more of like they're back of the rag for a reason. And am I having fun with this experience, or am I just going to hate play it until the end? And I don't want to do that. Exactly. Like, I don't blame you for that. I wish I had the courage to be like, all right, bro, I'm done. I've done a lot of hate plays, especially over the once, last when, year. I've done a lot of hate plays. Once you get to my age, I think you will, for sure. Because I think if I was only a couple of years younger, I'd probably be like you and be like, fuck it. But I think once you start to realize how precious time is and right. how much, like, you don't want to be sitting there like, I fucking hate this motherfucking man. What the fuck? Like, you know, like, once you realize that like, that's not how you want to spend your Saturday, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Then you're like, okay, let me play a game I actually enjoy. And I mean, for a while, I was like, I have to beat every game that I start. I have to. That's where like, I'm at right now. Or else I'm not a gamer. Or else, like, I don't. But I'm like, it doesn't matter. I've Do played I? enough games to completion. It. Yeah, like, I've, yeah, like, you kind of get the gist of it, especially like when there's so many games coming out. You know, you're just like, I'm just going to play what I want. And whatever really, some, like, gets its hooks into me. Like Dying Light Two, I think I'll probably finish, even though it's it's kind of strange, it's kind of quirky, and has a lot of bugs. I'm like I'm kind of fucking with this, you know. I want to see it to the end. Um, I don't know how long it is, but um, I'm gonna pick up Darkest Dungeon Two probably. I'm not gonna finish that. <laughs> like I already know. I'm gonna know put I'm twenty not. hours in and drop it. I'm gonna put 15, 20 hours in and you know put something on backlogged and. Maybe like, recommend it to you. Yeah, yeah and this be shit like, was good. Three stars. That was, yeah, that was good. <laughs> um, oh, did you know that Dying Light 2 has like a full sweet co-op in it? Like yeah, a whole fucking. That's how it beat the first game. I didn't know. That I was like, why isn't Sandy up? Like, why aren't we doing this together? I don't know. You don't like it? I like it. I, <laughs> <laughs> I love that there's classes and i've just not felt the difference between any of them like you go t to buy you know, gear, pick up and that's gear. my exact that's the exact reason why i didn't fuck with the first game like that i really fucked with the first game but i hated the skill trees because i was like it kind of reminded me of dead island where i was like these skill trees are just kind of arbitrary where it's like you could have just 
Right. Why am I specializing in bleeds? Like, mm. like the RPG mechanics don't feel like it's not like Borderlands where like if I up get this right. upgrade, my turret now shoots rockets and heals my allies or something like that. Right, right. Die in light, I just get more stamina. Like, yes. Just let me get that. Yeah, naturally. I think. I honestly think the RPG mechanics hold this game back a lot. Exactly. Like, Getting a legendary it has a sword. Lot of- yeah, it has a lot of the incremental, like, oh, 1.5% to damage during nighttime. I'm like, we don't need to do that with this game. I don't. like. I hate gear. We don't need gear. We don't need crafting. We don't need loot. We don't need RPG in every game. Yeah. It's it's held back. I think it, it could use, like, some light RPG mechanics, but not the, ex- like, it has, like, yeah. Diablo-level numbers. I'm like, what exactly. are you doing? The skill tree is okay. The skill tree, I'm perfectly okay with getting, like, right. a blade right. specialization and all that shit. But, like, I don't mm-hmm. need... uh. This legendary sword that does plus six headshot damage if you're no, using the yeah. twisting twirly attack. Yeah, I'll need to send you like a um, a screenshot of what some of these. Yeah, it's it's too loot heavy for sure. Too too much gear, and I love loot based games, but you don't feel the difference here at all. And it doesn't, you know, because you're not a specific class, it doesn't really help. Um. I don't know. It's just kind of weird to me. I'm like, why? In action here? RPGs, it, just... it works because you're killing so many things and you're killing so many things that drop so many things. So it's like, yeah, I'm getting a confetti of random stuff. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, OK, I have yeah. a mace here and a mace here. But this mace gives me plus two in intelligence. OK, right, I'll get this right, one right. compared to this. one. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's easier in those games to manage because you have so much and it's so much. But it's like in Dying Light, you're more worried about parkouring and skill. Yeah, I can just spam QWER on my keyboard and win Diablo. Yeah. Yeah. So but you have to beat Alpha so Protocol. Th- you have to be. I want to see how your story goes because I okay. the way that I did my uh, operative. We wait, wait. Don't spoil it. Don't I'm not going to spoil it. anything. I'm just going to say <laughs> I did not get a good ending. <laughs> <laughs> you were an asshole or something. Is I, that yes, what you're <laughs> I did a somewhat evil playthrough. So <laughs> I just want to mm. see interesting how how you'll go about it. Okay. Okay. Um. Do we have anything more to say about Dragon's Quarter, considering we've gone on for 30, 20 minutes now about different Not shit. Dragon Quarter? Uh, <laughs> listen, like we said, if you're a weirdo and you like weirdo games, this is this is up. Like, we need to make an iceberg video. That's what we need to do. An iceberg video of obscure, random, weird-ass games. And that's what we need to do. And this will be, like, layer two. Mm. Like, Dragon Quarter. Yeah. And like Crimson's tears would be like tear <laughs> below the iceberg, deep ocean tear. Yeah. Like I it's weird enough that like it can scare somebody if they're too mainstream. Like if all they play is Final Fantasy and fucking right. Square Enix games, like they would be like, I don't like this. But if you play if you play 13 Sentinels, <laughs> you can play this game. I think it's just a tough sell. When you're playing it and you realize how daunting it can be, but I think you can also... I've read, and just like you're saying, you can definitely cheat the game a little bit. You can cheese it. Um, But it's definitely not for everybody, for sure. Uh, It's for those people that really like a really patience testing challenge. Like, it's just not for everybody. Like, I don't don't think... Like, would you replay it? You know, Dev asked the same question, and <laughs> we've been doing this thing since now she's like me, but with books. She's like us, where she's like, I've been reading books. I got a book right. club doing all this. I got a book. I got a book for the book club, and I got a book for personal. Like, she's doing the same shit that we're doing, and I ask her all the time after she finished this book, like, do you love it? Do you hate it? Would you rate it? You know, the Anthony fan. Yeah, yeah, the Anthony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it. And... She always asks me, would you replay this game? And that shit's been hitting me like to my core because every game I'm like, nah. nah. <laughs> <laughs> but Dragon Quarter, no. I would replay. I, I honestly, I honestly would replay it. Like, I hate, once I I'm hate like, you. I hate that you lie. I hate the way that you lie. I just, 
I just That's cannot. crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. I cannot. You would replay this game out of all. So it, is this gonna be on? Yes, when we I do have the back. I have of the, the capital Rock to replay this game. You know how much money I have in my ant farm, bro. I could play this game for fun now. <laughs> I mean, it's weird because the game does hinge on replaying. So I mean, I don't even. I don't know. Yeah, just, I, I just honestly, I would probably replay it off of like a whim, like on some. Oh yeah, let me replay Dragon Quarter and just use my save and see like what new doors unlocked with my new D ratio that I got at the end of the game. Cause you know, all those locked mm -hmm. doors that they had where it's like, oh, you need to be D ratio 64 or whatever to unlock this door. I wonder what's in those doors and if there's like secret skills or secret weapons and stuff like that. It might be yeah, fun was a... to keep it a little fresh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're insane. Yeah. If... Hey, it's one of, the, it's one of, like you said, if you cut, <laughs> I love that my we, heart out. we literally change, we change that phrasing every episode. <laughs> At first it was like, if you cut me open, then it's like, if you rip my guts out, if you rip my heart out, it's like, if what is just, the If you become Scorpion and slam right through me, <laughs> it's, a copy yeah, of Dragon I don't know. Quarter comes out on the other side. <laughs> yeah, oh, but, great all right, game. well, we don't great have anything game. else to say. Fuck this game. Don't add it to your collection. Not add worth it. To your it. Collection. Even, it's cheap. Even though it's, yeah, it is really cheap for a reason. <laughs> There's so many copies out there that people are like, I, I have to get rid of this shit. <laughs> it's a great game, man. I have two copies. So it's a great game. When I was you don't really hoping your ears singing. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I was really hoping that it was gonna be good because I had two copies and that'd be, be kind of cool. But now I have two copies to get rid of to, to sell. Wow. I'll, I'll sell. I'm gonna send you my two copies, and you can have three of them. <laughs> wow! Send it to crazy. Uh, Deb's parents' house, and they'll be like, "What the fuck? Why is it?" <laughs> you just have two rogue random copies. Hey, shout out K, bro. I got a shout out, about, bro. In the Discord, when he uh, <laughs> he was like, "Yeah, I was gonna play along with you guys, but <laughs> I don't like rogue lights, so fuck <laughs> this." <laughs> nah, smart man. <laughs> Yeah. 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 I, d when he said that, I kind of did the whole. <laughs> like, I, just, like, I was like, no. I'm not going to lie. I did the same thing. I was like, oh, what are we getting ourselves into? Is this going to be one of yeah. those ones, bro? Is this our yeah. back? And he caught, he caught on to like, the style of game it was really quickly, which I thought was interesting. I was like, oh, you already know the, what it is? Okay. So I don't know. He, I don't know how much he played of it. But it was enough. It was it was enough. It was enough. I'll pin his comment in the comment section to let you know. I'll even put a timestamp and be like, hey, here's what Cade yeah. comments about. Yeah. <laughs> so shout out to Cade, of course. Um, all right. Well, that's it, guys. Uh, let us know if you've played Dragon's Quarter, if you plan on playing it, if you plan on picking it up. There's a very divisive episode, as you can see, me and Sandy both disagree on this game what are the f one of our first i think we usually agree on like at least if we should recommend it or pick it up but this is one of our first uh completely disagreeing that's crazy this is an arc it, is this starting a disagreement is this, arc <laughs> this is the disagreement <laughs> season <laughs> the disagreement. all right guys comment and do all the youtube stuff thank you peace out ciao